Hi, in this video I'll show you how to make this 12 volts to 240 volts high frequency inverter and high voltage DC power supply. It's a switch mode power supply which converts 12 volts to high frequency AC and also gives an output of high voltage DC by using a bridge rectifier. The circuit is based on the TL494 PWM IC. To power the circuit, you need about 12 volts. Any voltage from about 10 to 18 volts should work well. This can be a Lindacent battery or some lithium ion batteries connected in series. At the input, there is a fuse and a diode D5. The fuse serves for overcurrent protection and the diode serves for the first priority protection. In case you connect the input wrongly, the diode will forward bias and basically short circuit the fuse to the power source and cause it to blow. The fuse is written for at least 100 amperes and the diode D5 is written at a current more than the fuse. The capacitor C2 is a bulk capacitor for filtering the input voltage. Use the largest capacitor you can find and ensure that it's written for a voltage of at least 25 volts. The TL494 is a very good IC for use in inverters and switch mode power supplies. The IC has 16 pins as shown. The IC has two air amplifiers and two output transistors. Pin 1 and 2 are the inputs of the first air amplifier. Pin 3 is the feedback. Leave it unconnected as shown. Pin 4 is the dead time control pin. And with this, you can also control the output duty cycle and it can also serve as a soft start control pin. This is done by connecting a small capacitor between pin 4 and the reference pin 14 as shown and pulling down the downtime control pin 4 through a resistor to ground as shown. This will ensure that when the circuit is initially powered, the output PWM will increase in duty cycle slowly from 0% up to the maximum value. This will reduce the stress on the switching MOSFETs and the output downs. Pull up pin 2 to 5 volts and pin 1 to ground as shown. This will basically disable the first air amplifier. The second air amplifier will be using it for output voltage feedback and regression. Pin 5 is the CT pin and this you connect a capacitor between pin 5 and ground as shown. Pin 6 is the LT pin and this you control the timing resistor across it and ground. The timing capacitors C1 and R1 are 1 nanofarads and 10 kilo ohms respectively and with these two, they will set the oscillator frequency to about 100 kHz but the outputs at the output transistors will be half of that giving you 50,000 Hz. Pin 7 is ground which is the power ground and logic ground for the project. Pin 8 and pin 11 are the open correctors for the first and second output transistors respectively while pin 9 and 10 are the open emitters for the first and second output transistors respectively. Pull up pin 8 and 11 to VCC of 12 volts, which is also connected to pin 12 as shown. Connect a small capacitor between VCC and ground to smoothen the voltage supply to the IC. I'll be using the open emitters pin 9 and 10 to control the switching MOSFETs. So from each emitter connected in series with a 470 ohms resistor and ensure that it's rated for at least 1 watt. The first output will go to the first pair of transistors and MOSFETs, while the second one will go to the other pair of transistors and MOSFETs. The IC can give a maximum output current of about 200 mA. This may be sufficient for low frequency applications, but because we are dealing with high frequency, this is not ideal and it can cause the MOSFETs to overheat because they do not switch properly. So I have included a current boost section made up of the bipolar transistors, the BD139 and 140 for each side. This will boost the output current from the IC and can give a maximum output current of more than 1 ampere which is okay. So basically this, what they do is that they will boost the output current from the output transistors of the IC and amplify this and give a much higher current to drive the gates of the MOSFETs at these high frequencies of 50,000 Hz. For the MOSFETs, I have chosen the IRF3305. They are written for a drain source voltage rating of 55 volts and a drain source current rating of 140 amperes. Just parallel two of those to ensure that they can comfortably handle more than 100 amperes without overheating. They should give you more than 1000 watts from an input voltage of 12 volts. 
Os enjoy to mount them on good heat sinks. The working of the project is very simple. Once the IC is powered and begins operating, the output transistors will be switching as a push pin driver, and this is enabled by pulling up the output control pin that into 5 volts generated by the reference pin 14 as shown. This means that in case the output at E1 is high, that at E2 will be low and vice versa. Assuming in the first case you have a high output at P9 and through the resistor R7 as shown, this will cause the upper transistor Q3 to turn on but Q4 will be off because it's PNP. When Q3 conducts, the gates of the MOSFETs Q7 and Q8 are pulled up to a voltage almost equal to VCC through the resistors R5 and R9 respectively and this will cause them to turn on. Because the output at pin 10 is low, Q1 is off and Q2 is on and this will ensure that the MOSFETs Q5 and Q6 remain off because it will basically shut their gates to ground reference. When Q7 and Q8 conduct, now you have a current path flow from VCC through the lower side of the primary winding through the MOSFETs and to ground as shown. This makes the first half cycle. In the next stage, the output at P9 goes low and that at P10 goes high after a small end time in between. This will cause Q4 to conduct and short the gates of the MOSFETs Q7 and Q8 to ground, forcing them to turn off very fast. Q3 remains off. Because you have a high output at pin 10, Q2 now turns off but Q1 conducts and this pulls up the gates of the MOSFETs Q5 and Q6 to a voltage almost equal to VCC and causes them to turn on and conduct. When this happens, now you have a current path flow from VCC through the upper half primary winding through the MOSFETs and to ground as shown. This makes the second half cycle and completes one oscillation. Then the process will repeat over and over again 50,000 times per second. For the gate resistors R2, R8, R5 and R9, these are written for at least 1 watt and they are 15 ohms each. The resistors R3 and R6 ensure that the bipolar transistors remain off when not being driven by the outputs of the IC. The capacitor C5, C4 and the resistors R10 and R11 make up a simple voltage spike arrestor and they are connected across the primary windings as shown. When the MOSFETs are switching off, because the primary winding is basically an inductor and inductors have a tendency of generating voltage spikes when disconnected from a voltage source quickly, basically what they do is that they shot the voltage spike across the primary winding. When a voltage spike occurs, the capacitor C4 and C5 conducts and the excess energy is used to charge them. Then they are discharged by the series resistors R10 and R11, which are written for 22 ohms and at least 3 watts. The capacitor C4 and C5 are 100 nanofarads to 1 microfarad and ensure that they are non-polarized and ensure that they are good quality capacitors that can handle any excess heat that might be generated. For the transformer, this is a ferrite count per transformer. Ensure the query is sufficient enough to handle 1000 watts. You can use this simple formula to calculate the wattage or just buy a commercial core written for 1000 watts at a frequency of 50,000 Hz with a push-pull topology. For the primary windings, these are 2 turns on each side or 4 turns in series with a center tap. And for the output secondary winding, ensure you use at least 45 turns to ensure you get the maximum output voltage and to cater for any inefficiencies that may occur. And for the gauges of the wires, this is a simple chart and the list is as shown. If you just need high frequency AC, you can take the output from the secondary, but for high voltage DC, you'll need a high frequency bridge rectifier made up of the downs D1 to D4. These are 1N5406 and they are fast recovery downs which operate really well at such high frequencies. They are written for 3 amperes and reverse voltage breakdown of 800 volts. For 1000 watts, I recommend you use downs written for at least 5 amperes. With this 1N5406, you can get more than 700 watts without a problem. 
So this diode will basically take the modified sine wave from the secondary, rectify it to DC and the capacitor C6 will filter this to obtain a steady DC voltage. It is written for at least 400 volts DC and it's an electricity capacitor. So here you have your 240 volts RMS high frequency AC and here you have your 320 volts high voltage DC. For output voltage regulation, the output from the bridge rectifier is connected across a potential divider network made up of the resistor at 12 and R13, which are 560 and 10 kilo ohms respective frame, and the mean point is connected to the non inverting input of the secondary amplifier, pin 16 as shown. The inverting input, pin 15, is pulled up to 5 volts generated by the reference pin 15. Whenever the output voltage from the bridge rectifier exceeds 320 volts, the voltage drop at this point to the input of the non-inverting input pin 16 will exceed the voltage connected to pin 15 and this will cause the air amplifier to give a high output and this leads to the output duty cycle being lowered for compensation. For the PCB layout of the project, it looks as shown. This is the input, the fuse, the capacitor, the IC and its biasing circuit, the reverse polarity protection diode, the MOSFETs on one side and the other side, the ferrite transformer, and this is the DC output, and this is the high voltage, high frequency AC output. In 3D, the final bond should look as shown. The red part is the transformer. On the bottom side, it looks as shown. You can see the high current carrying tracks are well thickened to ensure that they can handle the large amount of current without much power loss. I hope you have enjoyed this video and if so make sure to give it a thumbs up, check out some of my other videos, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, have a nice time and I'll see you in the next video.